Today we start chapter six, propositional logic. This type of logic is very different than what we've done before. Uh, mainly, it leads into higher levels of logic. For instance, if you ever wanted to take a symbolic logic course, this is a lead into that. Some of the concepts are very similar. Um, and the other thing that's very different about propositional logic than what we've been doing before is that with proofs and with Venn diagrams and anything having to do with categorical propositions, the major units or the fundamental elements, as your book puts it, um, were terms. You had your subject term and your predicate term, etc. So what you have in propositional logic is now the fundamental terms or the fundamental elements are entire or whole statements. Now, you'll remember that statements are sentences that have a truth value, true or false. So some examples of statements that are given on page 311 of your textbook um, are divided into two different categories. There are simple statements versus compound statements. Simple statements, of course, can be defined as a statement that does not contain any other statement as a component. or we'll just say does not contain more than one statement. And compound statements are exactly the opposite. They contain uh, two or more statements. Now, again, if you take a look at page 311 in your textbook, I'll show you some examples of just simple statements. So as you can see, fast foods tend to be unhealthy. James Joyce wrote Ulysses. Parakeets are colorful birds. The bluefin tuna is threatened with extin extinction. So as you can see, these statements only say one thing. This is saying something about fast foods, something about James Joyce, something about parakeets, and something about the bluefin tuna. But what if we were looking at compound statements? Let's take a look at some compound statements. The first one we'll look at as an example of compound statements says this, it is not the case that Al-Qaeda is a humanitarian organization. It is not the case that Al-Qaeda is a humanitarian organization. Um, another example would be Diane Reeves sings jazz. And Christina Aguilera sings pop. I'll give you three more examples. Um, number three, either people get serious about conservation or 
or energy prices will skyrocket. The fourth one that we'll look at is if nations spurn international law, spurn, international law, then future wars are guaranteed. And then the fifth and last one, the Broncos will win if and only if they run the ball. So as you can see, each one of these statements has two components or two, st two statements within it. In the first case, we say it is not the case, and then Al-Qaeda is a humanitarian organization. Those are two separate statements. In the second one, Diane Reeves sings jazz is one statement, and Christina Aguilera sings pop is the second statement. So this is a compound statement when we put them together, and so on and so forth. So if we wanted to make these a little simpler, we could say, let's go ahead and do what we used to do with our terms. This is kind of the first part of the new standard form that we'll be talking about. So you still have to deal with standard form. It's just going to look very different. Um, we want to just symbolize an entire statement um, with a letter. So it is not the case that, and then Al-Qaeda is a humanitarian organization. That's the easiest thing to think about is Al-Qaeda is a humanitarian organization is a very obvious statement that's there. So we'll go ahead and change this to, it is not the case that A. If we were looking at the second example, Diane Reeves sings jazz, we could symbolize that with a D, and then symbolize Christina Aguilera sings pop with a C, and we'd end up with D and C. Here we have an either or instead of an it is not the case that or an and. So we have an either or, so either people get serious about conservation so we'll use a P here. The P, S, and M's uh, don't matter anymore as letters, as variables, so use whatever you like. Or energy prices will skyrocket, let's use E. So we might change this to either P or E. Then here we have an if then. If nations for an international law, let's call that N, then future wars are guaranteed, F. So in, if n, then f. And then the last one, the Broncos will win if and only if they run the ball. So b for Broncos will win and r for run the ball becomes b if and only if r. So you can see how there's a different set of different set of standard forms and how each entire statement is being symbolized by a letter. And that is the first part of propositional logic.